My favorite thing about the airplane sim is that the moment it starts, the plane heads into a nosedive. You better do something quick. Or do you? What happens if you just wait and do nothing? The airplane gains speed, and the lift force, the upward force generated by the plane's motion through the air, starts to increase, and the plane recovers from its dive. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this simulation, and we need to take it piece by piece. Let's start in the upper right-hand corner. There you see a free body diagram. Four forces are listed here. Lift, pointing pretty much upward. Weight, or gravity, pointing downward. Thrust, pointing pretty much leftward. And drag, pointing pretty much rightward. Each of these four forces contributes to the net force. This is the leftover force you get when all the downs and ups cancel and all the lefts and rights cancel. Whatever is left is the net force. The net force doesn't tell you how the plane is moving. That might come as a surprise to you. The net force tells you how the plane will change its state of motion. That is, if the plane is moving leftward, but the net force is rightward, the plane will not immediately move rightward, it will just slow down. The net force tells you the direction the plane will accelerate, not the direction it will move. The acceleration could represent a turn or a speeding up or slowing down. What determines the directions of these four forces? Gravity, or weight, always points downward toward the center of the Earth. That one is easy. Thrust points in the direction the plane is pointed. The engines are attached to the plane, so it's easy to see that they always push the airplane in the direction of its nose. The drag force points opposite to the direction of motion. Here's an important point. The direction of motion might not be the same direction as the plane is pointed. Imagine you just drop the plane from the top of a building. It might be pointing horizontally, but it would be moving vertically. So the drag force always points opposite to the way the plane is actually moving, not where it's pointed. The lift force is similar. It points perpendicular to the direction the plane is actually moving. The lift and drag forces, in fact, could be said to form a single aer aerodynamic force. We are simply breaking them into two components, one parallel to the direction of motion and one perpendicular to the direction of motion. So if the plane isn't pointed in the direction of motion, what direction is it pointed? The angle of attack tells us this. The angle of attack is the angle between the direction the airplane is pointing and the direction the airplane is moving. As a pilot, you get to adjust this by nosing the airplane up or down. An angle of attack of zero would mean that the airplane is pointed in the direction it's moving. The lift force depends on the angle of attack. The greater the angle of attack, the more lift you experience, as evidenced on the graph at top left. However, if you exceed a critical angle of attack, the lift suddenly drops to zero. This is known as a stall and can be very dangerous in flight. As you can see in the image at left, the smooth airflow over the wing is disturbed during a stall and the low pressure region above the wing allowing for flight disappears. We can add flaps to the wings. These are extensions to the wing that makes it behave differently as it cuts through the air. You'll notice flaps on planes when they are taking off or when they are landing. They allow the plane to generate lift at low speed. Slats as well can increase the amount of both lift and drag you experience on takeoff and landing. The lift force depends therefore on the direction of motion or angle of attack and the speed of the plane. It also depends on the density of air. As the air gets thinner at higher altitudes, there is less, less lift available, but also less drag. And the lift force also depends on the size of the wing. A bigger plane will be heavier, but it will also generate more lift with its larger wings. In fact, for any realistic plane, the lift and weight forces are, are by far the largest. And we have magnified the thrust and drag forces by a factor of 10 here. If we turn off that magnification, you get a more realistic, but harder to read, free body diagram. We've designed the simulation so it can't get into a crash. You should feel free then to push its limits and fly it as you want. I also encourage you to try to achieve totally level flight at constant speed. It's harder than it looks. Hope you enjoy.